Hello and welcome to Utah State University's Invertebrate Paleontology and Paleobotany class lecture. This is lecture 23 in which we'll answer the question, what is ichnology? What is ichnology? What a strange word, but what ichnology means is it's the study of traces made by organisms um, that are fossilized and it includes their description, classification, and interpretation. So it's the study of trace fossils. So that is what ichnology is. Now there's various ways in which we can teach ichnology and it probably deserves a course of its own. Um, but what I decided to do with this class is to go through and use slide lectures uh, model. Of, which is the behavior classification. This is a very simplified model of basically grouping um, different types of traces that you find in the fossil record uh, into a variety of ca categories that are based on the behavior of the organisms that are making the traces. And this is a very uh, good way of thinking about what the organisms were doing when they made the traces. And so it's a good one to present um, in a paleontology uh, class like this. And so we'll go through each one of these and um, they each are given a kind of unique itchia name. So we have the rep itchia, these are the crawling traces. The cube itchia, these are the resting traces. Pasture itchia, these are grazing traces. The fond itchia, these are the feeding traces. The dom itchia, the dwelling structures. And the fuichia, um, which are the escape uh, structures. So they're all itchia in terms of their names, but they all are representing sort of a type of trace fossil um, by describing the behavior of the organism that was making it. So let's look at each one of these and we'll look at like what, what are some of these uh, common behaviors that you see uh, in trace fossils. And what I want you to be able to do is recognize one of these six different types of behavior classification of trace fossils. So this is the um, uh, Repitia. These are some examples. These are crawling traces. So these are traces that are made by organisms that are moving across the substrate. So they're moving across and by moving across they are basically laying down tracks. We talked about the trace fossil Cruzania, which is the uh, crawling traces that are left by trilobites. Um, we talked about trilobites, um, but these also could include like dinosaur trackways. They can include um, crawling traces that are left by insects that are moving across. So these are very common. Um, so any trace that's left by the movement of an organism across the substrate would be classified as a rep itchia um, in this classification scheme that we're using in this lecture. So lots of lots of animals leave behind tracks. Uh, traces. Um, these are going to be the footprints of organisms, even humans, leave behind uh, tracks in the sediment that can be preserved in the rock record. The next group is the cubitia um, re resting traces. So these are traces that are left by organisms that are resting. They're not moving, they're just resting there, um, and, they, and they can get impressions. So if you look at this one uh, just below me, uh, you can see that there is a resting trace of a starfish in the sediments here. And you can get these in sometimes sandstones and stuff. You can also get resting traces for many arthropods that come and sort of rest down or uh, stay in one little area. And so they're just resting traces and that's the cubitia. Now another one that's really common is grazing traces. And this is very common with organisms that basically feed on the detritus that's on uh, the substrate. So for example, gastropods. These are modern gastropods. Um, in a wetlands environment, and they're basically just coasting through the mud and grazing on whatever they can find in the mud. Another example of grazing traces are often found in deep marine systems in which uh, they're low energy systems and the water's pretty still, and so these organisms can basically graze on the ocean floor and they basically feed. And oftentimes you can recognize them because they make a certain pattern that maximizes the surface that they are feeding on or grazing on. And so these are the Paschitia uh, types of trace fossils. The next one is feeding traces. And these differ um, in that these traces are made oftentimes in the substrate itself. So they're deeper. They're not just grazing on the surface of the substrate, but they're actually burrowing down 
and feeding on things. So if you think about uh, what earthworms uh, do as they're feeding. These can be oftentimes mistaken for um, uh, root traces, so plant traces that are roots, but wh what distinguishes these from root traces is the fact that they basically are going around in sort of a um, systematic way in terms of feeding in the substrate, um, and oftentimes they, they are bundled up as the various area in which the organism is feeding. And so these are feeding traces, um, oftentimes these are subterranean organisms, um, oftentimes many worms, some mollusks uh, do this, and basically going through and feeding and moving along in these traces. So that's the Funichia. The next type is the Domichia. These are the dwelling structures. So these are structures, oftentimes these are burrows in which organisms live in. So they live in these these burrows that are then preserved in the rock record. So these are dwelling places for these organisms. So oftentimes these are going to be areas in which the organism lives. And in fact, one of the important things about Domitia uh, dwelling structures is you oftentimes will find the fossils of the organisms that live in these, uh, these types of burrows. So they can be identified to a particular organism. So that's another classification is organisms that build like burrows that they actually live in instead of necessarily feeding um, through the sediment. So these are going to be protective areas that they burrowed into the sediment to live in. The next classification is the Fuichia. These are escape structures and uh, they're pretty remarkable. I think these are probably the most interesting of the trace fossils that you find, although trackways are pretty interesting too. So Fuichia are trace fossils in which the um, organisms living in them have uh, a way to escape out of them. And there's a variety of different types of, um, of structures that are preserved. And oftentimes what they are, are you have a tube, like a U-shaped tube that goes in. And these are burrows that the organisms burrow down into the sediment. And then they have a other escape route. So if one gets, one of these escape routes get uh, get covered up, one of those openings get covered up, they have another one to escape out of. Um, a lot of organisms uh, make these a lot, arthropods such as crayfish make these type of structures. And what's amazing about these is what the organisms are trying to do um, is uh, these are oftentimes found in a ichthyophases called the Scolithius ichthyophases that are, occur in sandy um, substrates. So what these organisms are doing is they're living on a sandy substrate where the water table can shift very dramatically. So because the, the substrate, the sand, is very permeable and has high porosity, so the water table will drop and rise. And so these organisms are trying to stay in the water column, and so they will burrow down to get down into the water <coughs> so they can live in the water area, and then they can escape out and come out when the water table rises up. Often tidal areas that are really sandy, you'll get these types of uh, features. You get them a lot of organisms that are going down to the water table and coming back up. So it's telling you there's a fluctuation in the water table. And so these are really important uh, uh, trace fossils that are used in sedimentology and in geology in general. Uh, very cool. Um, and these are what we would classify in the behavior classification that we're using is escape structures, the Fuchia. Now I mentioned that there's another type of way of classifying these. And these are based on the ichthyophases. So ichthyophases are very similar like facies in sedimentology, and that is that we classify or group uh, observations based on the possible depositional environment in which they're formed in. So you can think about grouping different types of trace fossils in the type of area in terms of depositional area that you're sampling from. So if you imagine along a rocky coastline, you get very different trace fossils. In fact, you get a lot of burrowing uh, organisms. You get things like barnacles and things like that. They're actually burrowing down into the really ro tough rock. And you get something very different on a sandy uh, shore. And so you have different types of ichnophases that are used. Um, and primarily these are used in reconstructing the depositional environment. And I go into more detail with these in my advanced stratigraphy class. Uh, where we group uh, trace fossils based on uh, the depositional environment that they're found in as well. And so uh, be aware that there is other ways in which to classify trace fossils. Now trace fossils are often given a scientific sort of genus name. These are form names that are used. 
Um, and you know, a lot of scientists tend to use these names. Sometimes others uh, tend to avoid them, but I think most ichthyologists use many of these uh, terminologies to basically communicate the types of uh, in, uh, trace fossils that they find, and they're not necessarily associated with the organisms that make them. In fact, it may be that a number of different organisms make the same types of trace fossils that you observe. All right, I wanted to make one quick note. Um, in this chapter, we talk about exceptional uh, faunas, and we'll discuss this in discussion in class. And I wanted to make a point of this term fossil Logenstaten. Uh, a Logenstaten is basically a very amazing, incredible, wonderful fossil locality or area that preserves remarkable fossils. And there's two types of fossil Logenstatens. The first is where you have a concentration deposits. These are places where you have a fossil site that has lots and lots and lots of fossils. So a good example like of that would be a Dinosaur National Monument here in Utah, where you get an incredible number of dinosaur bones that are preserved in an area. They're not the greatest preservation, but there's just a lot of them. The other type is a conservation deposition or deposit. These are where you get amazing preservation, but they may not be very, uh, very many in number. So a good example of a conservation deposit would be the Solohofen limestone in Germany, where the archaeopteryx specimens have come out of. So there's only a dozen or so archaeopteryx specimens that are known, um, so not very many. But when they are found, they're found with soft tissue preservation. They're found with the, the. Um, the feather impressions in the stone, so really remarkable preservation. And so that's an example of a conservation deposit or deposit versus a concentration deposit where you just have lots and lots of fossils. And both of those would be considered exceptional faunas, exceptional localities, and we call those Lagenstaten, which is a German term for really cool, amazing fossil discoveries. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching this very quick video on ichthyology. If you're interested in taking a course at Utah State University in geology, check out our website at geology.usu.edu. And if you're interested in checking out who I am and my website, visit um, benjamin-berger at org. Thank you again for watching.